Over here, with the green antenna on it, we have the TYT UV88, which some reviewers were referring to as the Baofeng Slayer radio. And um, there was some merit to that analogy. This was out in 2019. Uh, this year in 2020, about the middle of the pandemic, TYT upped the game and took this radio, added another 5 watts to it, and uh, added 10 to the number on this and came out with the UV98. Otherwise, it's essentially the same radio and uh, pretty much around the same price range. Uh, again, I think competition for the Baofeng series housed in a much more uh, appropriate looking case that is less looking like a toy radio and more like a serious radio. And you'll see the comparison on these two is uh, the main difference here for the side profile is on the 88 we've got this standard battery pack and on the 98 we've got the extended battery pack which is something like 3200 milliamps uh, otherwise the same on that side they're both the same on the on the top with uh, the one rotary dial button and uh, they have omitted the second button which will allow you to go through channel selections so this one controls on off and volume and then for channel selections you've got to use your up and down arrows the uh, battery switch on the bottom is essentially the same for removing the battery packs on and off let's look at some uh, forward reflected and standing wave uh, figures for the various antenna choices that we have for the radio and I'm starting here now with the stock antenna and here on the um, display on the radio at the bottom you'll see that on the A channel for these frequencies I'm going to test which is just the center tuning point frequencies of um, what the antennas normally come center tuned in for my aftermarket ones. The upper one is going to be mid power and the lower one is going to be the high power. <clears throat> I'm not testing. They also have a low power setting on here which I'm not using because it didn't work very well in the field at any time. So we're going to start out here now with forward power on mid power setting for the aftermarket antenna and we're seeing about 2.8 watts for forward power now when we move down to the B channel which is high power we're seeing <clears throat> it starts out at around 13 watts and then goes down to about 5 so now we're going to switch over and try an aftermarket 150 center tuned antenna. So here you can see the antenna that is on the radio and I'll come back down so we can see what the readout is. <clears throat> We're gonna start back up on the mid power frequency and we we'll see we're getting about three watts for mid power and we're getting about 11.2 watts and I think one of the things you can see with this antenna was the way that it sustained the output power once it the VFO started uh, the continuous power output which the stock antenna wasn't able to do well we got this antenna on let's go back and look at what the reflected power is and again we're gonna start with the mid power so we're gonna um, hold that on the mid power readout 
and we're getting about 2.9 reflected on the mid power. We'll toggle down to high power and see what we get for reflected power on that. 1.4 watts reflected power. And um, I forgot to do the reflected power on the stock antenna, so we're going to go back and do that right now. Stock antenna there. And let's see what happens when we test reflected power on the mid power setting. We're getting 1.2 watts reflected back into the VFO of the radio. And let's go down now to the high power. And we're getting 6.2 watts reflected back into the radio. While we're here and we've got that on, let's go with the standing wave at 150 for the stock antenna. 5.0 on this guy. Not really what we want to desire for a standing wave. And that was the standing wave on high power. Let's see what the standing wave is on the mid power. 4.8 just a little bit less. Now we're at to the uh, aftermarket center tune 150 antenna and we're going to look at the standing wave on that on the mid power setting and we got a standing wave of 1.9 which is acceptable and we're going to go up to the high power setting and we've got a standing wave of 2.1 so our standing wave improved there dramatically and I think that's enough said so I thought to myself, self, why not for shits and giggles stick the counterpoise on there and do these comparisons while we're out and about with it. And this is the same one that I used when I did the field testing as you see on Google Earth. So standing wave on here with a center tuned 150 and uh, we are on the high power right now. And we've got 1.48. Again, quite an improvement uh, of about 25. Is that 25% or not? Uh, anyway, it's 0.5. And uh, we'll bump it up to the mid power and just see what that does. 1.1. You can't ask for much better than that. And that might also account for why counterpoise does improved your field settings by definitely increasing the standing wave. And let's go over to forward power on uh, the mid power settings. And we're getting 3.2 watts on forward power for there. And on high power we're getting almost, we're getting 9.7 watts out of the 10 that the radio is for. So again, uh, we are seeing the benefits of adding the counterpoise. And let's look at the reflected power on the 10 watt output level when you're using the counterpoise. And you're getting less than 0.2 of a watt reflected back. I think that really is a very graphic demonstration of what the differences are between your options for using a tuned antenna or a tuned antenna with counterpoise or just the stock antenna. And I never use a stock antenna on my radio. I just refuse to do that. Further, for those who are interested in what happens with these radios when they have the Mars cap modification, Mars cap being of course US FCC regulations which don't apply to the rest of the world necessarily, although Canada does adopt similar regulations, they don't in Southeast Asia and for anyone that uh, wants to get on and start um, getting vitriolic about how we're breaking all the FCC rules, I would remind you that YouTube is an international medium and not everybody lives in the USA and is governed by the rules and regulations that pertain to that jurisdiction. So in the spirit of pure science, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at what happens when this radio is set to transmit on 170. 
and we're starting with what happens when you're using a stock antenna on mid power on 170 and you're getting about 2.5 watts let's move it down to high power and see what the output is you're getting about 9 watts on high power at 170 with the stock antenna and let's while we've got it on there um, look at the standing wave and so and I'm only going to do standing wave on high power and it's 14 for a standing wave you really really don't want to be having a standing wave that's that high and now we're going to stick a center tuned aftermarket smiley antenna on there and see what kind of difference we might notice so now as you can see we have an aftermarket IPX6 smiley antenna tuned to 170 and we're gonna first of all just reverse what we just did in the same order and looking at what the standing wave on high power is for the tuned antenna we've got 4.2 so we reduce the standing wave by 10 uh, by going to a tuned antenna and let's see what our forward power is going to be with that one and we've got 10.7 watts for forward power and uh, that's on high and then let's see what our reflected power is going to be out of that and we've got 4 watts reflected so we are seeing improvements on that and um, I'm not going to go and uh, do the test with counterpoise on 170 because I so we've got our counterpoise on here now on a center tuned smiley at 170 and uh, again just quickly point out if you haven't seen the other videos size does matter this counterpoise is 10 AWG and we also have tested with 12 and those two are about the minimum thickness you want for wire when you see these YouTube videos of people making rat tails from little tiny strands of wire um, I guess maybe they didn't pay attention in school as to how the earth itself is a big capacitor and um, when you're trying to emulate a ground plane which is the earth you do want to emulate with the maximum capacitance and that's where the size of your wire does come in so if you're tempted to try and make a rat tail from some thin 18 or 16 gauge wire don't bother it's it's not worth it go out and get yourself some the thicker the higher the capacitance the better so let's look and see if we've got an improvement I think we had four for standing wave uh, previously with the aftermarket antenna 14 with the stock antenna the lower number is the better one and we've got 2.6 here which is much better than 4 so what does that say it says that counterpoise does work let's see what it does for forward power and this is on the high power setting and we're getting again the 10.8 watts and how does that show in terms of an improvement in reflected power it shows an improvement there we've got two watts of reflected power which is down from what we had without the counterpoise what does that say it says counterpoise definitely does have an effect in all these field conditions and I'm not going to drone on and on and put a 160 on there I think um, what we're doing is making the case here that in all conditions an aftermarket antenna that's tuned to the frequencies you're using is better than a stock antenna and better still is counterpoise let's take a look at the vector analysis for the stock antenna and then compare it to an aftermarket tuned antenna and as we have found pretty much across the board with most stock antennas is the same with the one that's coming with the UV 98 and for those of you that aren't familiar with this graph here what we're doing is on this window you can see up here what we're looking at is the standing wave ratio and 
we've got this red line here which shows the desirable area where we would like to keep the standing wave below that. The bottom axis is the center tune point that some of our antennas are matched to. In other words, this is the standing wave. This line represents the standing wave at any of these given frequencies, which is characteristic of the antenna that we have attached to the ve vector network analyzer. And so let's go down here and we'll walk through what we're seeing with the stock antenna and explain. So at 145 megahertz, which is where hams are interested in, up to 148, it's this very first column here. And you can see that our standing wave ratio is acceptable through that range, it's quite acceptable. And from 148 at the end of the amateur radio band up to about 151, which is now putting us into the commercial bands, we have acceptable standing wave. After that, for anyone that would be using frequencies above about 151 and uh, we'll put marker 1 there and we can see if you look over here now for our marker marker 1 we have a standing wave of 2.8 and that's up here so we won't bother you can see here that although the radio would be capable of transmitting up into this area again now if we look at marker one if you were wanting to transmit up there with a stock antenna you would have a standing wave of 20 which is clearly very very undesirable and so where marker one is now 151.3 you would not want to use the stock antenna anywhere past that but as we did see on the previous tests we were getting more reflected power with the stock antenna anyway so this doesn't mean that this is a vilification of using a stock antenna I would still not recommend it now let's go and put a tuned 150 antenna on here and see what we come up with in terms of comparing the standing wave that we were getting. And so you can't see me, but right now I am unscrewing the stock antenna and screwing in the IPX6 center tuned at 150 which is the black. Now we're going to go up in here and we're going to redo the sweep. So now we're going to sweep the new antenna and you'll see it change here and that's just what happened. Now if you see marker 1 <coughs> it's still down here. If we move marker 1 over we find that it starts to fall out of the desirable standing wave ratios right around 155 and that's what this antenna is tuned for. It's tuned for 145 to 155 and you can see here that it conveniently is following that requirement as evidenced by this graph here. And so at this point when we want to transmit between 155 and say 165 we would then move to the next antenna and so on. And again this would be for people who might be using 
antennas in commercial frequencies and or search and rescue guiding all those sorts of things where ACMG, AMGA, all those types of organizations they have various frequencies all throughout this part here. Actually before I conclude the demonstration of the network analyzer I thought maybe it would be interesting to also uh, juxtapose what happens when you put the counterpoise on this tuned antenna and as we can see here is what we just left uh, and it's still showing the standing wave ratio line for the aftermarket center tuned antenna without counterpoise. Now I've got counterpoise mounted on there and we're going to re-sweep and see what kind of change that makes and you can see that the change is also fairly significant in that the scale might have confused you and you might think initially oh it looks worse but look where our line of three went it's way up here at the top of the screen now and so our standing wave here is actually decreasing from 145 and the counterpoise makes the most significant amount of difference at the 155 level but also look what counterpoise does with respect to moving the standing wave down to its lowest level around 165 so from this you could infer that the counterpoise is not only lowering your standing wave it is expanding the window that you can have an acceptable standing wave through and this window here pretty much got extended right out through 175 as you can see all this is below our uh, optimal line of 3 so now I'm going to run through the area that uh, we tested the radio with various antenna and counterpoise combinations on it as illustrated on Google Earth here so you can get some perspective as to distance and terrain effects on the antennas and the radio. So here we have a thousand foot view of the area in question and right around here is the town of Banff. I left one of the radios in the backyard with She Who Must Be Obeyed, who um, may have had questionable effect on the results given she was seemed to be spending more time concentrating on deadheading her flowers than uh, she was on answering the radio and giving me reception reports. So I took off and I headed southeast along the Spray Valley and tested the radio in various locations and what my logic was was to start out with the stock antenna until I started losing it and then working from there. So the total area ended up being from the top here of home to where there was no signal is nine kilometers and what there is is there's an old fire road which is now a single track trail that you can bike on and it starts at the Fairmont Bound Springs Hotel and works its way along this path here you can see me tracing with the, my cursor so from the home location we get to the very first test where I'm down in the valley pretty much directly below the Rimrock Hotel and using the stock antenna Sharon reported receiving a signal of 5x5. Five five. Then I went on to the next point which you can see here and again you can get a scale of relative scale 
when you know this is nine kilometers here. And all my tests were pretty much when I hit high points of land when I was on the trail, except for, I believe, number four, which was right around here. Okay, so very quickly, stock antenna, the first test, I got five by five. Uh, I tried again this time on mid power and I still got five by five with the stock antenna. When I got here, I pretty much reached the limit of what I could do with the stock antenna. I was on 10 watts and I think it varied between 4x4 four four and 5x5 five five for signal strength and audio quality. Now we get up to this point where I switch from the smiley antenna or I switch to the smiley antenna still even then um, very sketchy reception because this was the one low point on the road. So then when I hop back onto the bike I got up to a higher point again and Sharon reported reception of 4x4 four four and I was on mid power at that point. When I switched to high power uh, I got 5x5 five five reception report and again that's with the aftermarket smiley antenna. Then I get here and with just the antenna signal strength of 3x3 three three, which improved to 5x5 five five when I added the counterpoise to the antenna. Now going forward I get to the point where again I hopped off when there was a higher point of ground and I got 4x4 four four. this was with using the counterpoise and it was interesting to note that that was when I had the counterpoise angled down toward the ground at about a 45 degree angle. I tried some other positions and sometimes she couldn't hear me at all. It was starting to get dark and I needed to get progressing with this before it totally got dark on me. So I rode quite a ways through very terrain getting to this point which was the highest point of land before you go down hill and into here where there's a bridge over the spray river and then you would climb up again my original intent was to try this high point of ground right in here before you go down into Goat Creek but it was getting too late to try that so maybe that'll be for another time however here as you can see I did not get a signal and then coming back I tried to see if I could find the place where I lost it which basically you can see the trail snaking through here and when I tried in here I wasn't getting much because lo and behold I suspect although she who must be obeyed is in denial I think she went back into the house because it was getting dark and with a metal roof on her house uh, there's no way she was going to hear me calling her. So I have to do a conclusion here and I guess what we need to address is that question we started with which is is the UV 98 in fact the Baofeng Slayer as some have claimed and although I don't have a Baofeng for illustration purposes I do have a couple of similar radios over here on this side being the Wushan and the Xianjing so what I would say would be to perhaps quote she who must be obeyed who often points out to me that John boy the best woman that you've got is the one that's with you and that also applies to a radio if you're out in the middle of nowhere and things go south the best radio is the one you got and one of these let's say that this was your Baofeng, your Wushan, your Shanjing if you had one of these with an aftermarket antenna such as this I would say that they would be better than the UV 98 with the stock antenna however if you're just starting on your journey 
or replacing one of these radios that um, has packed it in or upgrading and you're on a budget then of course you'd be best off to discard those from your thought process you end up with this and then discard the stock antenna and move up to the aftermarket antenna and then if you want to even expand that further then you would also add in the counterpoise. The counterpoise in this case being the VHF you, there is a separate counterpoise if you're doing all UHF. So then what have you ended up with? You have ended up with a more rugged water resistant form factor case than these radios, a longer battery life, and 10 watts of output power as opposed to 5. So is it the Baofeng Slayer? you probably could build a good case to claim that. And hopefully that will help with some of your buying decisions. Feel free to get in touch if you have any more questions. Rumpo? There with fingers interwoven, both hands uplifted, he as through an instrument, blew mimic hootings to the silent owl that they might answer him. Horace! Bloody woman interrupting my words. What? what did you say? I said, coming, O oh master of the blue horizons, she who must be obeyed. Ro